That's right. This is the one many of you have been waiting for, the index fund tutorial. I appreciate your patience on this one. I know a lot of you guys have been leaving me comments that you've been anxiously awaiting this tutorial, but I really wanted to make sure that I covered some relevant topics first, and I really needed to dedicate the time to this to make sure it could be as comprehensive as possible so you feel as confident as possible when you go to buy your own index funds. But now I think we're ready, so let's get into it. So here's the plan for today. I'm going to walk you through the exact steps that you'll need to do to be able to build your own index fund portfolio. After watching this, the goal is that you'll feel confident to be able to set yourself up with the most sensible and simplest way to invest in the stock market for the long term even if you're an absolute beginner. First of all, please promise me that you'll make sure to do a proper risk assessment before investing in the stock market. You can watch today's video so you understand how it's all going to work, but please, please, please either go back and watch my video on how to do your own risk assessment or Google it and take a questionnaire. Also, it would really be beneficial to understand how asset allocation works before you invest in index funds. So I did a video on that that you can check out too. And I'll be showing how these two things apply to what we're doing today. Assuming you're good to go in those two departments, we'll first talk about the actual process step by step of what you'll have to do on your investment platform to buy an index fund. Then we'll look at two approaches you can use to getting set up with your index funds. The first approach is going to be the easiest one, and I'll show you why later on when we get to it. The second approach is going to be a little bit more work, but it's also going to allow you to have a bit more flexibility and customization. Neither approach is necessarily better than the other one. It really depends on what you want to accomplish. As long as you go with the option that suits you, you'll do well. And lastly, I'll show you what to do to manage your investments going forwards after you initially make it. Okay, so let's begin. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is log on to your investment platform. Now for today, I'm going to be using TDs, but don't worry if you're not using the exact same one as me because all investment platforms are roughly the same and the navigation should be similar. Once we're in the investment platform, we should immediately be able to see some information about our investment accounts. We should be able to see our balance, maybe our current investments, as well as some balance changes perhaps. The landing page should be kind of like an overview dashboard of your investments. So the first step in buying investments is to search for it. And fortunately, this is actually done very simply. As you may know, stocks have something called a ticker symbol, which is essentially just a short form code that allows you to search and find a stock very simply. For example, if I wanted to find Apple stock, I could just type in its ticker symbol, which is AAPL. Or alternatively, you could also type in the full name of the company and it should show up as well. That's great for stocks, but what about index funds? Well, the cool thing about a lot of index funds is they're actually exchange traded funds or ETFs for short. You may have heard of these. And basically what this means is that these index fund ETFs trade on stock exchanges the exact same way as stocks do. This makes it very simple for us to buy them and invest in them. So these index fund ETFs or exchange traded funds also have ticker symbols associated with them so we can find them very easily. So to start off, I'm gonna to navigate to where my platform allows me to pull a quote on an investment. So I'm gonna click on this little button right here which allows me to go directly to quotes. And then this screen will pop up that allows me to type in either the name of the investment that I'm looking for or the ticker symbol. So for example, when I was talking about Apple, I can type in AAPL and there you go, Apple's gonna come up right there. For our index fund that we're going to take a look at as an example here, I'll type in VGRO, which is the Vanguard Growth ETF Portfolio. Now that I've pulled it up, I can click on it, and then it's going to show me the ETF. I can click here to get more information on it. And then this is gonna give me a little bit more information on the ETF. So now that I've selected the index fund that I want to purchase in this example, 
I can go ahead and press the buy button. Now this brings me to a screen that's going to allow me to enter the information that I'll need to input in order to place an actual trade to buy this index fund. So over here on this side, we can see the relevant information about the index fund that we're looking at. We can see the last price it was traded for. We can see the daily change that it just experienced. And we can also see something called the bid and the ask price. Now this is something that's very important that I want to highlight for you. So basically what we have here is the bid means the highest price that a buyer is willing to offer for this index fund at this moment. And the ask is the lowest price that a seller is willing to receive for the index fund at this moment. So you can see that they're very close together. They're off by just a few cents. And that's because a trade for this index fund is going to happen when the bid and the ask are equal to one another. Just like with anything, if you and somebody else agree on a price to buy and sell something for, then you're going to make that trade. Now in practice, index funds like this are usually traded thousands or even hundreds of thousands or millions of times per day. You can see that the volume that this was traded on this particular day was 177,000 times. This means that trades are happening by the second. Many people invest in index funds, so they're always being bought and sold. I'll throw a little bit of financial terminology at you. This basically means that they're very liquid, or in other words, that they trade hands very easily and you can put money into them very easily and you can take money out of them very easily. That's kind of what liquidity means. And that's why the bid and the ask price are very tight together. Okay, so the next thing we'll have to do on our screen here is we'll have to decide whether we want to buy or sell the index fund. Now, obviously in our example here, we're going to want to place a buy order. So that's already selected for us here because we hit buy on the previous screen. And then after that, we're going to decide how much of this index fund we want to buy. And this means how many shares of it we want to buy. And we can see here that a share is last trading for $22.32. So to properly determine the quantity that you want to buy, you'll have to decide how much money you want to invest first and then divide it by the share price to see how many shares you can buy. So for example, if I wanted to invest $1,000, I would divide 1,000 by 2232. And that would tell me that I can afford to buy 44 shares, actually 44.8 shares, but you're gonna wanna round down. So I can go ahead and enter 44 here. Now the next step is the type of order that we want to place. Now the two main ones that you're gonna wanna consider are a market order and a limit order. A market order basically means that you're going to offer to buy this index fund at the market price. In this instance, that would mean that you'd be offering 2236 because that is the most recent ask. If you buy the index fund this way, that means that your order is most likely going to be filled instantly, but you don't have tons of control over the price you're offering. And that's why I prefer to use limit orders. So when you choose to do a limit order, it allows you to pick a price. Price. And this price is effectively the highest price that you're willing to offer for the index fund. So if we see here that it's trading for 2232 right now, and I don't want to pay any more than 2232 for the index fund, I can enter 2232. And what this means is it's going to essentially put me in this bid of 2232. So I will pay nothing higher than that, but I'll also accept anything cheaper than this. So essentially this protects me from paying a price that's more than what I initially intended to pay. So that's why I recommend to use limit orders and that's why I use them myself. Now the last field that'll be there for you to select is the good till duration of your order. So basically this is just asking you how long do you want your order to be active for? So you'll have the option for it to be good for the entire day, or you'll be able to specify a date range that you'd like it to be active for. Now, for most of us, we're gonna wanna be placing our trade within the day. And because index funds are so liquid, we should be able to make the trade no problem. So this means that if the day did pass though, and your limit order didn't get filled, then your order would actually be canceled and you'd have to place a new order the next day. 
And once that's all set, then you can go ahead and preview your order. So now you'll be able to see all the relevant details that you entered just to double check everything to make sure it's okay. You should be able to see the estimated total of your trade and this will probably include any commissions that you're paying to make the trade depending on what platform you're using. And then if it all looks good for you, you can go ahead and agree and send your order to the market. And that's the process of buying an index fund. So if you follow those steps, then you've made your investment. Pretty cool. So now let's take a look at some actual index funds and portfolios that you can create. First, let's look at the easy portfolio. Now remember, just because this one is easy to set up doesn't mean it's not good. It's great, in fact. And the fact that it's also easy is just the cherry on top. The reason why this portfolio is really easy is because all we have to do is buy just one single index fund. That's it. This single index fund contains everything inside of it that we need to have a properly diversified investment. Let me show you. So these are the asset allocation all in one ETFs offered by Vanguard. And they're some of my favorite index funds. And basically they range from being very conservative and safe investments to being more risky. So you can select the one that suits your needs based on your risk tolerance. The way they accomplish this is by having different asset allocations. So we have the conservative income ETF portfolio, which is made up of 20% stocks and 80% bonds being the most risk averse portfolio. And then we can go all the way up to the all equity ETF portfolio, which is made up of 100% stocks. And then there's a bunch that are in the middle. For example, the balanced ETF portfolio has 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And one of the most popular ETF portfolios is VGRO, which has 80% stocks and 20% bonds. So let's take a look at this one as an example so I can show you a little bit under the hood of this index fund. So there's some important information that I want to point out here about this index fund. And I'll be putting the links down below in this video so that you can check everything out yourself. You can look on this page to get all the information you need. You can also download a fact sheet, which also has the relevant information. The first thing I want to point out is the fee associated with this index fund. So it has an MER of 0.25%. MER stands for management expense ratio. Now this is a fee that gets taken out of your investment automatically every year. This fee is extremely cheap. If you were to go to a financial institution and work with a financial advisor to make a similar investment in a mutual fund, you'd likely be charged between two to 2.5%. So this is essentially 10 times cheaper than that. This means that you're going to be saving tons of money. This actually amounts to hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. It's a huge difference. So there's also some information here about the objective of the fund, the investment strategy, and some performance metrics as well. We can also see here, here's the asset allocation between stocks and bonds. But what I really want to show you is what's actually inside this index fund, because that's probably what you're wondering. So this here breaks down what's inside. And looking at this, it might not immediately be extremely clear or obvious to you what this all means. So let me kind of break it down for you. Essentially, this is saying that this particular index fund is invested 31% in the US total stock market index. So this means that 31% of your money is going to be invested across US stocks, essentially the majority of the US stock market. The next 23.8% of your money is going to be invested across the Canadian stock market. The next 17% will be invested across the rest of the developed world. So Excluding North America, it'll invest your money across the rest of the developed world's stock market. So this is like Europe, Asia, and other developed countries. The next 12% will be invested across some Canadian bonds. We'll have 6% invested into emerging markets. So that's countries that are still in the process of developing. And the remainder will be invested across global bonds and US bonds. So you're mostly invested across 
the entire global stock market here with a bond component. Now, what the heck does this actually mean? What kind of stocks are you actually going to be invested in then? Well, you can actually see the entire holding details of this index fund, and you're actually going to be invested in thousands of stocks. But here's just the top 10 that you're going to be invested in. So this top 10 is broken down based on the percentage of your money that's going to go into each stock. And here you can see the actual percentage of your money that will go towards the purchase of each of these stocks. So the top one is gonna be the Royal Bank of Canada. And you can see here that these are all names that you know. The next one's TD Bank, then you have Microsoft, Apple, Enbridge, we have Amazon. These are all likely companies that you would have wanted to invest your money in anyway. Honestly, pick any well-known company, you're most likely going to be investing your money in them. That's the beauty and the simplicity of investing this way. You can make sure that you're going to hold all of these stocks by just buying one single investment. You can even see more details such as the breakdown of the sectors you'll be invested in here, the country weighting, all sorts of good stuff. And I really recommend that you kind of play around with the fun page to make sure that you fully understand it and see where your money's going. So essentially, you can invest in one of these all-in-one ETFs that meets your specific needs based on your risk tolerance and asset allocation, and then you'll be able to hold thousands of stocks across the global stock market. It really could not be easier. For example, does your risk tolerance tell you that you should be invested into a balanced portfolio? Easy, just pick the Vanguard Balanced ETF portfolio. All you have to do is literally just follow the process that I showed you earlier, and then you buy one of these and you're set. You're now an index investor. Now let's say you're a little bit more savvy when it comes to investing and you wanna have a bit more control and specificity over your index fund portfolio. In this case, we can build a three fund portfolio that's going to be able to give us the exact asset allocation that we want. And the funds we can use to do this are VCN by Vanguard for our Canadian stocks, XAW by iShares for our international stocks, and ZAG by BMO for our bond component. All of these funds are recommended for use by the founder of the Canadian Couch Potato Portfolio, Dan Bordelotti, and they're also on the Money Sense All-Star ETFs list. Suffice to say, they're widely recommended and they're great. That's because they're low cost, simple, and they include everything you need. So ZAG invests in Canadian corporate and government bonds. It has this yield information here, which is how much money you'll earn from holding these bonds. And it also has an MER expense ratio of 0.09%. VCN for a Canadian stock component holds essentially the majority of the Canadian stock market. It holds 198 Canadian stocks. And as you can see here, its top 10 holdings are some of the biggest and baddest companies in Canada. This fund is also extremely cheap with an MER of just 0.06%. And then XAW allows us to invest in the rest of the international world because essentially it excludes Canada but holds everything else. And here in this geographic breakdown, you can actually see the other countries that it's invested in. So almost 60% of the fund is going to be invested in United States stocks and then the rest is broken down according to this list right here. You can also see by sector as well. XAW has an MER fee of 0.22%. So by using these three funds, you also lower your costs a little bit because these funds are cheaper than the all-in-one ETF offered by Vanguard. But they're not drastically cheaper. So unless you're investing, you know, high six figures or more, you're not likely to really notice much of a difference. And even then, it's gonna be a pretty small difference, but it is a little bit of a small benefit. So with these three funds, you're able to construct your portfolio in a way that allows you to be globally diversified and it gives you full control over your asset allocation. For example, you could say, hmm, maybe I want to be invested in 20% into the Canadian stock market, 
40% into the rest of the world, and then the remainder of my portfolio will be bonds. So that would give you 60% of your money invested into the global stock market and 40% invested in bonds. Now the nice touch here in terms of customization is that you can choose those proportions exactly, but you can also choose what proportions of your money goes towards Canada and the rest of the world. So you do have more customization there, but you are going to have to place trades for three different funds and then properly manage the balance of those three funds. So it's really about what level of involvement you want. Either option is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. One is super easy, just set it and forget it. And one requires a little bit more to set up and a little bit of maintenance as well. And it's just a trade off in terms of customization and simplicity. But in the end, performance should be very similar. The thing that really determines your performance is your asset allocation. More stocks is gonna give you a higher return, but also higher risk. <laughs> So now let's pretend you've made your investment. You've bought one single all-in-one fund or you've bought those three different index funds. Now what? If you invested in the all-in-one fund, then I actually have some great news for you. And that's because you don't have to do really anything. One of the benefits of the all-in-one funds is that they automatically rebalance themselves. And what that means is basically, you know the asset allocation that the fund started with? So if you picked VGRO as your index fund, it's supposed to have 80% stocks and 20% bonds. The fund will automatically keep your investment within that range. It will always maintain the ratio of stocks and bonds that it's supposed to. So it's extremely hands-off. You don't have to do anything. But if you invested in the three individual funds, you have a little bit of work to do. You'll have to rebalance your funds. And this is something that I recommend doing probably about once a year. So let's imagine that you invested 20% into the VCN for your Canadian stocks, 40% into XAW for your international stocks, and the remainder of 40% into ZAG for your bonds. Then let's say over the course of the year, stocks went up a lot and bonds went down a lot. Now this means that your asset allocation is gonna be a little bit out of whack. And that's because the stock component of your portfolio will have increased in value and your bond component will have decreased in value, which means that now stocks will make up a higher percentage of your portfolio and bonds will make up a lower percentage. So now what you'll have to do is you'll have to sell some of the stock component of your index funds and then use that money to then purchase some more of the bond index shares of your portfolio. This will then bring your portfolio back in line with your initial target asset allocation of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And the great thing about rebalancing is that it automatically forces you to buy low and sell high. And that's because you sell the investment that went up in value and then you buy more of the investment that went down in value. That's part of the reason why I love index investing so much. Much. It just ticks all the boxes of a really smart investment approach. Another thing to consider moving forwards after you've made your investment is that as you age and approach goals like retirement or other savings goals, you're going to want to de-risk your portfolio over time. This means lowering the amount of stocks in your portfolio and increasing the amount of bonds. This is because you're going to want to protect your money more as you move closer to the time when you're gonna start pulling it out. So if you start off investing in a fund like VGRO, which invests in 80% stocks and 20% bonds, then as you age and move through life, at some point it might be a good idea to sell that index fund and then purchase VBAL, which has 60% stocks and 40% bonds. So that way you can lower your risk a little bit. And the same logic applies to the three fund portfolio. You wanna sell a bit of your stocks and buy a bit more of your bonds. And then you can kind of do that gradually as you move through life with your earliest investments being the riskiest and then your latest investments being the safest. And so with all of that, I think I've laid out pretty much everything you need to know to use the time tested, most sensible and simple way to invest in the stock market. I'm honestly really excited for you because this can change your life. And it's really cool to have been a part of that. If you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video, maybe go and check some of the previous videos I've done because I might have covered it there. But if not, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help out. I'm Steve Antonioni and this has been the Index Fund Tutorial at Cash College. 
Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Yeah, boy. Yeah, B. Thank <laughs> you.